Hey everybody, this is a letter to Joseph Hansen by Leon Trotsky. It's from January 5th, 1940, and it's from In Defense of Marxism. Dear Joe, thank you for your interesting information. In the case of necessity or of advisability, Jim could publish our correspondence and that with right concerning the split matter. This correspondence shows our firm desire to preserve the unity of the party in spite of the sharp factional struggle. I mentioned in my letter to Wright that even as a minority, the Bolshevik wing of the party should, in my opinion, remain disciplined, and Jim answered that he wholeheartedly agreed with that view. These two quotations are decisive for the matter. Concerning my remarks about Finland in the article on the petty bourgeois opposition, I will say here only a few words. Is there a principal difference between Finland and Poland, yes or no? Was the intervention of the Red Army in Poland accompanied by civil war, yes or no? The press of the Mensheviks, who are very in well informed thanks to their friendship with Bund and other PPS emigres, says openly that a revolutionary wave surrounded the advance of the Red Army, and not only in Poland but also in Romania. The Kremlin created the Kusinin government, with the evident purpose of supplementing the war by civil war. There are information excuse me, there was information about the beginning of the creation of the Finnish Red Army, about quote enthusiasm end quote of poor Finnish farmers in the occupied regions where the large land properties were confiscated and so on. What is this if not the beginning of civil war? The further development of the civil war depended completely upon the advance of the Red Army. The, quote, enthusiasm, end quote, of the people was evidently not hot enough to produce independent insurrections of peasants and workers under the sword of the hangman Mannerheim. The retreat of the Red Army necessarily halted the elements of the Civil War at the very beginning. If the imperialist helped the Finnish bourgeoisie efficiently in defending the capitalist regime, the Civil War in Finland would become for the next period impossible. But if, as is more probable, the reinforced detachments of the Red Army more successfully penetrate into the country, we will inevitably observe the process of civil war paralleling the invasion. We cannot foresee all the military episodes, the ups and downs of purely tactical interests, but they don't change the general, quote, strategical, end quote, line of events. In this case, as in all others, the opposition makes a purely conjunctural and impressionistic policy instead of a principled one. It is not necessary to repeat that the civil war in Finland, as was the case in Poland, would have a limited, semi-stifled nature, and that it can, in the next stage, go over into a civil war between the Finnish masses and the Moscow bureaucracy. We know this at least as clearly as the opposition, and we openly warn the masses. But we analyze the process as the process is, and we don't identify the first stage with the second stage. With warm wishes and greetings for all friends, Leon Trotsky.